so this is a Paleozoic um, engine. Small little engine that you can splash into a couple of banks. Uh, or into every day here. Right? Since the Paleozoic tracks are relatively ge <coughs> generic. So you can splash them. In general, because they're decent traps. And then there are traps that when a trap is played, once per chain, you can special summon these traps from the graveyard as normal monsters. So 1200 attacks, zero defense, aqua, level 2, water type monsters. And if they will leave the field, they are banished instead. And they are unaffected by monster effects. Interesting, they're normal monsters, but they are unaffected by monsters. By other monster effects. So, that's interesting and important to note. But depending on which uh, periods of you want to use, uh, trap, you know, you can, you can tweak and modify this engine to, to suit your style, your, your needs. There's a Paleozoic Pikaia, mm -hmm. which is discard one Paleozoic card, draw two cards, so it's essentially Reckless Greed, and you know, you can use that as an engine, as a drawing engine. There is, uh, if you don't want to use Paleozoic Dynamiscus, you can use uh, Paleozoic Hallucigenia. Play one face of monster in the field and this attack and defense become half this kind of attack and defense. Inside of the turn. It's a pretty decent card and since it has to do with uh, uh, making a, a creature loot, um, attack become uh, half of its current attack, you can use that darn damage card. So, um, decent card is, you know, choose which ones you want to play or play all, uh, all, all four of them or whatever. But, the main ones you they're pretty simple and easy to use and have versatility that you want to use is Dynamiscus and Olinod Nid Ole Olenoidus or Ole for short, right? because um, it's it's target one spell attack on the field, destroy it. You know, essentially it's a dust tornado MST that's what I want to look at. It. And Somebody's gonna play a, a spell, you know, like a trap that's gonna stay on the field. Um, what's good about it is it doesn't have to be a, card, a spell or a trap to stay on the field. The point you can play like like MST, for example, and then you can activate this in response to destroy that MST just so you can trigger one of your periodic trap cards in the way so that way they can summon out to play as a monster. So, so that has some some use there. It's trainable, and that's the main thing is. This is chainable. This is chainable. You can chain this to somebody playing a twin twister, right? And then banish their twin twister. And then this goes to the graveyard. No big deal. But as soon as the trap is played, whether you play a trap or your opponent plays a trap, you can summon it back from the graveyard afterwards. This has a target face up front of the field. Then discard a card. And if you do banish that card. So, for you, so obviously, if this gets negated, you don't have to discard. Because uh, this card is not cost as part of the card's effect. If you have Imperial on Wall in the field, of course, you won't be able to use this part of the effect of banishing. But the idea is to play these cards, at, you know, as is, and then you know, if you want, you can combo it with Imperial Iron Wall. Since Imperial Iron Wall is a pretty decent floodgate in itself, it's used against decks that use banishing it as a, as part of their deck's capabilities or strategy. Or let's say you go up against Infernoids or something like that, you know, just require to banish monsters to summon their monsters. This is useful against that. This is good against that. Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, cosmos and, you know, any, any, any deck that the banishes, this would be good against them. Uh, it's a good response to it if your opponent's playing Imperial Iron Wall or what, or what not. Not Imperial Wall, um, Macro Cosmos or Dimensional Fusion or Banish Radius or anything that 
it makes you banish. You can play this and now you don't have to worry about your stuff being banished. So this is just like a direct out to cards like that. Cards that uh, have banishing effects. You can use this as, as a defense against it. But the fact that the Pelia Zords, when they are summoning these monsters, when they would leave the field, they are banished instead. So with the current armor, it prevents them from getting banished, which means every time you or your opponent activates a trap once per chain, you can special summon back from the graveyard. If they're sent to the graveyard, or, you know, battle, card effect, or whatnot, definitely won't be by a monster effect because they're unaffected by monster effect, but suits by battle. Spell trap, for example, would typically cause them to go graveyard because in Paran Wall, which is what you want because as soon as they play a spell trap, I mean, play the trap card, you bring it right back and it's like it's infinite resource. They wasted a card. Like, for example, let's say they dark hold, yeah, they play this old trap monster, right? It's like, well, now it goes to graveyard because they have Paran on the field. And then they're like, alright, well, now I'm going to activate my reckless green. Or my, uh, or my, um, call of haunts or something, something like that, right? And that's like, alright, well, now I bring the Paleozoid back. You know, I still have something to defend myself with. And that's the usefulness of it is the fact that they, that they'll come back to, to defend you. So you don't end up in a scenario where it's like, oh man, I drew this card, and all it could do is destroy a spawn trap, and then, and then that's it. It's like, they can destroy a spawn trap, of course. But if under the right conditions, if the opponent activates a trap, then you can obviously bring this back from the graveyard as a monster. A way to keep them on the field if you want to add to this engine is a card I saw. It's called Aquarium Stage. Water monsters you come control cannot be destroyed by battle with non-water monsters. Um, the likelihood of your opponent having water monsters are slim, not impossible. One, number one on one is a water monster. It's a rank four. But on average, your opponent probably not going to be playing any water attribute deck, so it, this will, will work a lot. Um, also has a secondary effect that if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one aqua type monster from the graveyard and special summon. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except for aqua type monsters. The players are trap monsters. Um, you know, players are traps. They are aqua type monsters on the field, not in the graveyard, of course. So, if you use this, right, bring back a totally awesome which is an Alpha type monster, or a Paleozoic Opa Bimia, which is also an Alpha type monster, use this to bring them back, and then your opponent activates a trap, you can still bring back Paleozoic, um, Paleozoic trap monsters, because they are Alpha type monsters, if you use Alpha stages secondary effect to bring back any of these two Alpha type like, seeds. But in general, the fact that any any engine, small, simple, that's versatile, as well as can um, give you field presence, very useful field presence, so you don't have to use up more resources to maintain field. Because remember, your point is negative. Imagine, like I said, your point of dark holes, then activate a trap, or let's say you activate your pure iron wall after the dark hole. Let's say you already have one face, right? And then they dark hole your Paleozoic um, traps, right? Um, while they were in the monster zone. You go to the graveyard, then you can play a, a second iron wall to trigger the summoning of one of them back onto the field. And then now you still have field presence, and then you know the iron walls will prevent both players from bashing anything. Mostly it's going to hurt your opponent more than you, that's the idea. And then on top of that, you know, you pay the Zork whenever they are destroyed, they just go back to the graveyard, which means you can bring them back again at any time you or your opponent activates a trap. And you're, you know, kind of counting on your opponent activating some traps to uh, allow you to play this, which is the whole idea. It's an engine that you're trying to take advantage of the fact that your opponent more likely is going to play some traps. <coughs> but if they don't, you already want to play some traps, it's going to trigger these anyway. The fact that they're level 2 water monsters. And you can use them as XC monsters, as XYZ monsters, like materials to exceed someone. Then you have options of Totally Awesome, because it requires two level 2 aqua type monsters, and the Paleozoic uh, traps are aqua monsters when they're on the field. 
Paleozoic Opalabinia requires two level two monsters. They are not affected by other monsters back right? then. You can um, detach the material from this card if this has a trap as a material, which it would. <coughs> now you can search out one of your Paleozoic trap cards from your deck to the hand. So that helps with deck thinning. Plus, you know, hey, who doesn't like to search out um, you know traps or search out cards in general that they can use to against their opponent? And also, it lets you activate players or traps from your hand during either player's turn. So that's useful because once you detach and search out <coughs> a player's or trap like Ole or Canadia or even Anamiscus, you can use it right there and then and deal with a problem or a threat at, at that current moment. Also, because you already detached a, 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 a player's or trap. To activate uh, Opa and Binia's effect. Now there is a trap in the graveyard. Once you activate that trap from your hand, Paleozoic trap from your hand, now you can special summon a Paleozoic trap from your graveyard as a monster. So that's very useful. And if you have Aqua, I mean, a current stage on the field, it can't be destroyed by battle, which is useful to have monsters that can be destroyed by battle because that helps you keep field presence. And then you can use that field presence to you know, attack and fight your opponent and maintain advances. The fact that these um, um, rank two monsters are rank two in main phase two, you can summon something like uh, Downer Magician, for example. So if you can be special summon on a rank three or lower an XYZ monster you control. Um, in main phase two, so you, know, you can throw that in there if you, if you want a, a 2100 uh, spellcaster dark monster that you know gets 250 material attached to it and it has piercing um, abilities and you know just in general if you want something strong plus the spellcaster is dark it has some benefits you could probably uh, you, um, if it has two material for it, which are more likely it would, then it'll be a 2500. And you can use, um, you know, at least two of the virus cards: epidemic, vi uh, epi yeah, epidemic virus, eradicator epidemic virus, and deck devastation virus. Won't be able to use full for the virus because her defense is 200, <coughs> but. The fact that you can activate one of those two other traps, those other virus traps, is useful in case you want to do that. You throw that in there as an engine. And it is a trap, so it'll help you trigger the Pay Lord in the graveyard and summon a Pay Lord from the graveyard. But the fact that you can access some pretty good rank twos, number 29 Mannequin Cat is pretty good. There's some tricks you can do that. I like to think of the idea that I could use this in a mirror match. If I'm using Paleozoic, the Paleozoic Trap Engine, right, in my, in my deck, and I'm going up against a deck that's similar to my deck, let's say I'm playing Zodiacs, and my opponent's playing Zodiacs, and, but I have the Paleozoics in there, I can take advantage of using number 29, Mannequin Cat, to use her ability to detach material, target my opponent's grave, or special summon monster from his grave, or onto her side, to my opponent's side field. Based off of, I could target any, after that, I could choose any monster on my opponent's side field, that um, obviously has a creature type or a attribute and choose either creature type or attribute and then someone from the hand deck or graveyard uh, monster that fits uh, that's either that specific creature type or that specific attribute whichever one I choose so if I'm playing Zodiac and my opponent's playing Zodiac obviously it would be East Wars or I can summon like the rap here from my deck hand or graveyard by her effect but typically the best thing to do is summon from the deck for deck dinner, you know. The less you have in your deck, the better chance you have to join into some stuff you want, like spells and traps. So she's very useful and she can help you, you know. Think of her as a rank 2 version of X Saber Invoker. So using the Fairy Fairy Traps, you essentially now have access to a essentially a X Saber, a rank 2 X Saber Invoker. 
which is useful in a mirror match because you can bring back the monster from your opponent's graveyard to their side of the field. And then you choose any of the monsters that's on the other side of the field and then summon a monster from your deck can or graveyard onto the field that meets either the creature type or the attribute of the monster in the field and take advantage of it. And then you should be able to play off plays, combos, and spam and do whatever you want. Especially if you have monsters that, that have the effect that when they come into play, they do something. Because this card doesn't have the, the effect where the monster you summon loses its effect. So obviously, you bring something out that has a come into play effect, and then you can take advantage of that. It's got a cavalry. Pretty good monster. Can't be sure about battle. It's a 2000 time frame piece for it. So that's all good in reg in general. Then it has an ability that at the end of the damage table, this card battle and opponent's monster, you can touch with this card to return that opponent's monster. That effect does not target, so obviously it's really good. Then we have the Phantom Knights of Cursed Javelin, which is pretty good. Generic, attachment material, target or face up monster, opponent controls, until the end of that turn, changes attack to zero, and its effects negated, which is very useful when you're, when you're trying to take down something like Utopia the Lightning, or a creature just that can't control by battle or perfect. So, because they have that effect to protect them from being controlled by battle or perfect, you can use this to one, make their attack zero, so it'd be easier to run it over to 1600, and two, make it work since you took away their effect. Now, they're not protected from not being able to be served by battle and then you can beat them. Of course, this effect is useless against any monster that's unaffected by monster effects or unaffected by power effects, but and um, parts that have um, the effect where they can't be targeted but this effect does target is good against everything else which is what 90% of Yu-Gi-Oh! everything else can be targeted everything else can be affected by card effects there's only like a handful like 10% of, of, of monsters in the game that can't be targeted or can't be affected so this is obviously really good very basic generic so you can pretty much beat anything with this which is what makes it really good and if you use the pillars or a trap engine you can go into it and that's always a good option since there are water monsters you can obviously create cat shark as long as it has material it can't be destroyed by battle it has an ability to get the material from this card and make um any rank for or lower xyz monster control um double its attack and defense in time turn that's pretty useful, especially if you use it on stuff like um, number 29, make her up to a 4000. You can use it on totally awesome, make him a 4400. You know, you get the idea. And then you have Herald of Pure Light, which is generically good in case you want to recycle your, your monsters or your extra deck monsters. It's a pretty useful card. The ability to have an effect to recycle stuff. Stuff is very useful, especially since extra decks are the maximum is 15. Extra decks are pretty tight, so having something that lets you recycle is pretty useful. And you know the fact that you can use the pay the resort traps to go into Power of Pure Light to use it to recycle any extra deck monsters or any main deck monsters that you want you want to throw back into your deck is very useful. Or just in general, in case you just want to add like a Baylor or a ghost order or a cherry blossom from the graveyard to your hand and then take another card from your hand put it back in your deck it's all up to you whatever you want to do and the ability to reuse hand traps or you know how this is really good really so it's a pretty decent monster it's an option and if and i'll just go to canadian for a bit if you want to replace this on dynamiscus or something else because you know you might you might have you might not like the idea that the Imperial Outlaw can make this card's uh, field effect useless. Um, it's up to you. Of course, you choose when to trigger this trap, but it's up to you. I personally am a fan of this card, so I personally use it, but as a option to to switch out or side out or whatever you want, you want to do. If you just want to switch it out completely. Canadia is a good option. There are a couple other options I pointed out that you might want to use, but I like these because these are pretty general purpose. This 
deal with the back row and just can get rid of a monster or deal with some back row. So that's always useful to have a multi-purpose car. So that's why I like to use it despite the fact that I have Iron Wall. But more likely early game, I would be using this and this would be more late game. This is more of like, oh, these are in the graveyard now. I want to bring them back by using this to bring them back and then, you know, and then there's an engine right there that I can use to stall, defend. I can use to just gain field advantage, <coughs> do stuff. Especially if you if you use it in um, like an attribute deck, like Marsh or something, and it's like you have to be apparent on wall, which will let you get this one of these back, especially doing the point end phase, like end phase, iron wall, and then bring back one of the Paleozoas, and then on your turn, tribute the Paleozoa to some of your monarch, because the iron wall is on the field, the Paleozoa will trap you know, the monster, will go to the graveyard. That way, if the trap ever gets activated, it will come back, and there you go, you have infinite tribute fodder for your little monarch back. This could be obviously thrown in anything, including monarchs. And that's the end of the video.